Today I'm going to teach you how to make three different background materials. The best part about this is that once you're done, you'll have these three background materials you can use in any of your projects. I'm here in Blender 3.4, so this should work in pretty much any version of Blender. And I've got a pretty simple scene set up here, just this abstract wooden sculpture thing, and a plane, and a single area light right there. Alright, the first material we're going to make is a simple grid. Grids are really useful for giving a nice clean presentation of your 3D model, so it's a great place to start. Make a new material, name it grid, and this material will be based off the brick texture, so add a brick texture, and plug that into the output to take a look at it. We need to turn these brick shapes into squares, so we need to change the offset to zero to get them all lined up. Then we simply need to change the brick height to be the same as the brick width. 0 0.5, there we go. And now you can see they're still using this random color, so we need to make sure color 1 and color 2 are set to pure white. Now we can adjust the mortar size. Uh, Type in, that's too thin, 0 0.005, that looks good. And then you can just change this scale here to change the size of the grid. Go something like that for now. Now we can plug this into our shader and plug it into the output. That looks interesting. We'll add a color ramp. And if we just adjust these colors, it'll look super nice. Put this one to maybe a lighter gray. This one darker. Well, that looks awesome. Let's see something like that. I don't want too much contrast, but I want enough that you can see the lines. That looks good. And then we'll just add, plug this into the height of a bump node. Plug that into the normal, and then turn it down to maybe 0.1. You can see a little bit of an indentation along the lines. That looks really nice. You can adjust the roughness and stuff, but I think it looks pretty nice by default. That seems a bit too shiny. Yeah, right there really seems really good. Okay, that is it for the grid. This nice, really clean presentation for our sculpture here. And before we go any further, Check out my newsletter. I'm sending out weekly Blender tips, lessons, news, and more stuff like that. You don't want to miss any of it. Okay, next we're going to make this swirly effect. It's kind of a swirl texture. It's good for like an abstract style. So, hit this to make a fake user so you won't lose your material. Hit the X, hit new, name it swirl. And this time we're going to start with a Voronoi texture. Plug that in the output and have a look at it. To make it more interesting, we're going to add a noise texture and plug this color into the vector. Ah, that's cool. And we'll just turn up the scale to like 17 maybe. And add some detail. You can play with the roughness a little bit, but I think it looks pretty good where it is. You can add some distortion. Ooh, that's awesome. Let's go with maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.6 for that. And go with 0.4. Okay, now we can just plug this into the base color. And let's add another color ramp to add some color to that. We're going to pick a light gray on this end. And maybe a. Ooh, that's neat. Maybe some kind of brown on this side. Okay, well, you can mess with that, but that looks pretty nice. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we'll just add some bump to this one, too. Plug this into the bump node. Connect that to the normal. And that's way too strong. Let's turn it down to maybe like that. And this one, I'm also going to plug into the roughness, too, to give it some variation there. There you go, that's pretty neat. 
still too bumpy. And if you want to control the roughness, you can add another color in. And black would be perfectly shiny and white is completely rough, so this seems a bit too shiny right here. So I'm just going to raise the black up to more of a dark gray. Okay, and if you want to change the scale of the whole thing, it doesn't work when you change this, this just scales one of the textures. You can simply connect this to a texture coordinate, like so, and add a mapping node in between, and plug a value into here. Now you can just change the scale with this convenient control. So I'm going to just scale it down a bit, I can just go like that. There we go. And that is looking quite nice. Actually matches the style of the sculpture quite well. Okay, and that's it for the swirly one. The next one is probably the most complicated. It's a simple sort of cement or smooth concrete. It's great for maybe more of a modern presentation. Make that a fake user, hit the X, new, concrete. Okay, and for this one we're going to start with a Musgrave texture. Turn the detail all the way up. Dimension to zero. And you get this awesome roughness effect. Turn the scale down to like 1.2. There we go. Okay, and we're going to mix this with noise texture, so add a noise texture. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can shift Control click on a node, and it'll just plug it right into the output for you. Saves a ton of time. Scale maybe 6. That's good. Detail all the way up. And roughness is good where it is. Let's add some distortion, maybe like 4. There we go. Right now we'll just use a difference node. Type color, mix color. And set it to difference. Also we can add a color ramp if you need or add some more control over these. And just push the white this way a little bit. There we go. Okay, now we can use this to drive the color. Add another color ramp, and we're going to turn these both into gray. So this one will be a darker gray, and this one will be a lighter gray. There you go. It makes this really neat subdued effect. Okay, and I'm also going to plug this into the roughness. Looks pretty good without any changes. And another bump node. It's actually slowing cycles down a little bit, but it's not too bad. Mm -mm. That is way too strong. Turn down to like 0.1 again. Let's have a look at that. Oh yes, that looks really good. I'm going to make it even darker. And you can do the same thing on this one if you want to control the scale. Quick shortcut to add a texture corner and mapping node is Control T if you have Node Wrangler enabled, which I highly recommend. Then you can plug this vector into both of the noises. And drag out of here, make a value. And you can adjust that for quick scaling. Okay, that looks pretty good. That one's probably my favorite of all three. Okay, and that is it for your three backgrounds. Make sure you hit fake user and save all of these. Whenever you want to use one of your backgrounds in a new file, just go to File, Append, and Locate Your File. Go down to the Material option, and just select your material. And then in your any material drop-down, you'll see it there. And this is Eevee, so it's taking forever to load. But there we go. Okay, that's it. See you next time.